All right, Kenman here, and it's time for die project number 16 and a little bit of 17. Part two fights. All right, what? Confused? Well, if you didn't see, you can go right here, bing, and that is video part one, uh, which is the teardown of 16 and 17. I did them together. And I will explain why in a moment here. Um, long story short, I took the two super cheapos that I got, the Sativian and the Efengro. Took them both apart at the same time. The Efengro basically had scales and a backspacer. This is the backspacer. So since it has a backspacer and scales, I want to do a different color. So for that one, I'm going to take the backspacer and add it to the Sativian. We're going to do the Sativian one color, we'll do the Ethan Grow another color, and then the Ethan Grow will have a two-tone. Does that make sense? All right, excellent. Also, if you watch that video, when I took the Ethan Grow apart, the, this had rust all over it. It was a brand new $20 knife, but it had been sitting on my table since I purchased it, never used it, and this piece and this piece had rust on it. You can go check out that video when I took it apart and see how nasty it was. Um, but I took it to work. I work at a place that does metal finishing and some other cool things. And so we decided to go ahead and clean it up and try to reuse it anyway, rather than just throw the whole thing away. And, uh, yeah, turned out all right, I guess. Anyway, so today we're going to do the Sativian. It's fully apart. It's ready to go. We have two scales right here for it. And I'm going to set them right there we'll shift this camera over just a little bit okay so you got those two scales from the sativian and then we have this back piece from the even grow i'm going to take this and get it out of our way for now oh and a reveal these are the uh, the dyed uh, knives that are on deck to get done soon um, I also have another one uh, that we'll talk about in a second, but for now we're going to try to streamline this. We're already at two minutes. We haven't done anything except for talk. Kenman is a long-winded, crazy person. Okay, let's get these in, get them going. Um, we are doing purple today. We've done a couple purples before, so uh, purple is not a new color to us. Um, I got these little hooks that I've made to make it easy to go in and out of the dye. And so I'm just going to get them all set. We're going to get this piece ready to go. And we should be set. All right. So purple does go a little bit longer, so we don't have to be as rushed. Uh, red, if you remember, goes really fast. Um, so we don't have to be so crazy and quick. All right. So everybody knows the drill. If you're new here, when we go in, we're going in a little past three minutes there, so we can kind of keep time. And what happens is the die starts to uh, coat the entire part and so what I like to do is you want to not have any air bubbles on there any weird little air pockets that tend to stick are going to create an area that's going to not allow the die to sit as well in that spot or sit in that spot at all and therefore it's going to end up being different and then that air bubble spot will end up having a lighter shade and we want nice uniform color with these all right, and so this is that other piece from the Ethan Grow. We'll get that going without any bubbles. Get it under. All right, we are set. We are in. I am now going to just grab these real quick. You see when the dye is on there, it kind of starts to drip. And it's like thick in spots and then thin in other spots. So those drips, if when you take it out and you just let it sit like that, where those drips are will die a little bit longer and continue to die and make it on uniform, kind of like the way the air bubbles work in reverse. So we want to let those sit in there for a good amount of time. It looks like they got a nice coat. We're going to shift over here. We don't need to really look about worry about that right now. The magic of everything I do will now change that. I'm have my assistant come in and do all that work so you can see off camera that I, I cheated. <sighs> lies, all lies. I'm just kidding. Okay. We got a couple of minutes on that purple, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at some stuff that we haven't dyed yet. This is the CR, CR, CJRB Lago. I really like this knife. Fun knife. Uh, I just did an unboxing of the CJRB uh, cord, 
That's just another button lock by CJRB, and I am raving about their button locks. I have several CJRB button locks that just, they just do this. They work. They work every time. <laughs> it's, they're, they're awesome. But this one has a tan color G10, which that tan is going to affect it. If it was white and we dyed it purple, it would just be purple with that white. And if we dyed this purple, it would be purple with this tan. And so it's going to be a duller, more darker kind of a shade. So we have to figure that into the equation when we think about what color we want to do. It's also black with these uh, accents, then the silver and the red. So we have black, silver, red, and a fourth color that we've got to deal with. What would we like to see? This is the huh, fail. Got to fail every time, Kevin. Uh, this is the Sen Cut Watauga, is what I like to call it. Button lock. Also really nice, really snappy. The Sen Cuts do the same kind of uh, deal with the button locks. They are quality. Uh, I like them. Uh, this is a neat knife. It's got a cool uh, shape and design. What color would you like to see that one? This is my newest uh, Sen Cut uh, Vesperon. Really kind of a cool looking design. It's got that really shiny kind of a frame to it too that I, I like that look. It's a nice looking knife. What color would you like to see that one? We've got the Kaiser Amicus, right? Yeah, Amicus. <laughs> My brain. Also a button lock, as you can see, I like button locks. As a lefty, button locks tick boxes for you. They work really well. What color would you like to see this Amicus? It does have this kind of, you can see through it a little bit uh, more than some others. You see that little bar and the little spots. So maybe we want to consider doing a lighter dye with that. We've got this Corvid Mini Cleaver uh, by Concept. This thing is great, but uh, it's just a big package in a small package, right? What color would you like to see that one with the black uh, accents with the blade? Cool stuff, fun stuff. Lots of things we got coming in the future. Um, I maybe have some more coming in the mail soon, which I do because I have a problem. Or do I? Anyway, okay, let's take a look. So the back spacer, it looks dark when you take it out, but you see as it starts to drip off, it lightens up. So the purple does take a while to kind of really soak in the colors, depending on how dark of a shade you want to see. Now they look really dark right now, but as, you, as it drips off, look towards the top, you can see it lightens up. Um, but we might want to go ahead and do a rinse. What we can do is I have a water rinse. I can rinse it off and then that can uh, show you what the actual color is underneath those drips and let you know if you want to continue to dye or you want to stop. The nice thing is, is you can stop and go back and dye it again later. Um, it's not something that you're, you're stuck with once you stop. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to do that and do a check to see where you're at. Okay, so this is just water. Like I said, it's gonna neutralize the dye immediately so that we don't have non-uniform coating. I'm gonna just go straight into this. We're gonna swish it around so we can take a look. All right, so I think we want darker. But again, it's all personal preference. What do we want? What do we like? What do we prefer? Each person has their own style, so that's what's kind of also neat about it, is when you do this, you are making it your own. Um, and so it's kind of up to you to decide how, what color, how dark you want to go, how light you want to keep it. So this is definitely kind of on a, it's a neat shade. It's a little bit lighter, kind of like that first purple I did, not super dark. I think I do want to go a little bit darker, so we're going to go ahead and Put them back on the hooks and go back in for a couple of more minutes. So it looks like we're going to have another nice long video today. These dies, that's the thing, is you just don't know. And so you got to not drop it in the water. You got to kind of go by what it does, what it tells you, and you, you guys got to accept the process and see where it takes you. I'm actually even going to turn it up a little bit. Oh, I accidentally turned it off for a second. 
Um, but yeah, the hotter it is, the faster the dye can uh, take effect. But you do not need it absolutely scorched boiling. Just uh, close to boiling will work fine. In actuality, I'm going to be doing a marble dye pretty soon. I've been kind of putting it off. I know I'll, I'll get to that. It's actually the dye before this one. Um, but that is going to be room temperature dye. And with that room temperature, it's literally, you know, it's, it's going to take over 24 hours probably to be able to soak in the color that we need, maybe even longer. All right. So these are the ones we've done so far. We've done 14 dyes. Check them out. That was that first purple that we did. This is a different shade of purple that I use on this one. It was like a violet uh, orchid, something like that. So it was always going to be this lighter color. The purple we're using now is like from this Gobi. So we have the ability to get it nice and dark if we would desire, which I would like to get it a little bit closer to that. It doesn't necessarily need to be that dark, but I am looking for a darker shade with it. You can see with the reds, we've done the same a uh, couple different ones. This is the Artisan Cutlery Arroyo, really liking this knife. This is another one of those ones that has that shine on that edge that is just really neat. Cool looking <clears throat> color. There's a red. Here's another red. This Kubi uh, Titius. I um, actually dropped this thing and dinged it up pretty good and it actually revealed some white underneath. The color doesn't soak all the way through. So if you rip off chunks that are underneath there, I think the jade soaks in a lot more than the white, and that was a white, just like this Vision FG was also a white G10. If you kind of look on the edge, it's a little lighter, kind of starting to fade. This was only in that dye for one minute. The thing is, is you can always put her back in there and add some color and spruce it back up or change it or whatever you desire. Um, another send cut button lock. This is the Crowley. I love the Crowley. Look at this. Right? It's up oh, there. It didn't. Okay. One time it didn't close completely, but it, I mean, it literally just does what you want it to. And then button locks are fantastic. There's a bigger one. This Fantara. Boom. I really like the way this looked. It's kind of a weird peach, but you see how you can see through it. Um, I really like that. I, I enjoy that kind of design. I definitely want to get some Altum, get some things like that where you can kind of, it showcases the inside a little bit more that the Crowley is kind of like that too, where I did it light with that yellow so that it kind of gives us that shade. Here we are almost at 13 minutes. One of my favorite knives, Kubi Femius, underrated. People don't know about it. Look at that. Oh, not very expensive. Fantastic knife. I love that. All right. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. I can see some bubbling churning over here. That means it's definitely hotter. And after a couple of more minutes, I would bet you we're going to be good to go here. Yes. All right. Ready? Into the rinse. Into the rinse. Okay, get my hands out of the way, yank this over there. I'm going to leave that spacer in there. I want that nice and dark. I'm actually going to do this in here. Okay. Now we're going to give them a wipe off, see if there's any little chunks or any spots that have some dye still on it. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. This is looking good. Nice shade. It's going to give us the way the... Uh, contouring is on these scales it's going to give us that nice looking uh almost wood texture that's what i've been calling it kind of look which is cool all right let's take a look at this spacer hmm. not bad i knew because this is thick and it's going this way and you know i'm gonna leave it in there for a little bit longer than i did the um, scales because I want to get it darker. I'm going to get rid of this water. Alright, so my hands are turning purple. Anything you get dye on, it is dye. It is crazy permanent. Uh, it does what it's supposed to do. So you do not want to spill it. You do not want to get it on a shirt that you don't want to get it on. Uh, it's, it's a real deal. These spots right here yeah, if you don't wipe those off, they turn permanent pretty fast. 
Okay. What's everyone think? Getting some stuff. Getting some results. I just want to really dry them off now. Do they look better on the purple? Or look better on that black like that? It looks pretty good. These, what's everyone think? 15 minutes. All right, we're going to be pushing into the 20, I can tell. I apologize for those of you who uh, stu tune in and stick around the whole time. Thumbs up to you. Thumbs up to me. I don't know. I'm crazy. It's Friday. We're going to have a good weekend. I uh, Let's uh, sidetrack discussion for a second while we're letting these dry. I just booked my room at Blade Show Texas in February. Well, we'll be coming up in February. I have never been to a Blade Show. I've been wanting to go for a couple of years now. And finally was able to pull the trigger. And I have booked my room at, uh, what is it, the AC or whatever, which is just a couple blocks from the convention center. So I will be there. Who is gonna be there? Comment below if you're going. Um, let's meet up. Let's have some fun. It's gonna be great. Uh, I'm definitely excited. Uh, it's gonna cost me quite a bit of money to get out there. I live in Minnesota and the hotels are not gonna be cheap that weekend unless you want a car and drive several miles away. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna fly or I'm gonna drive. I could drive. I do like road trips, but uh, it's like an 18 hour drive and I would be by myself. I don't know, we'll see. What I can tell you is I will be at Blade Show West I mean, Blade Show, Texas, in February. It's like the 23rd and 24th, 4th of February. If you are going to go, let me know. Let's meet up. If you've gone and you have advice for me, please, any advice. What should I bring? What are the pros and cons? What are the tips? What are the tricks? What do I need to know so I don't look like a fool when I'm out there? What is it? What are the essentials to bring? I kind of want to do like something. I don't know. I, I do 3D printing and I'm an artist. I kind of want to make something or maybe do something or or whatever and then give a bunch of them away for fun. This is a walk around just for the hell of it. Or maybe even do like, I don't want to like poach off of other people's ideas, but I've seen some people do like games and stuff, walk around and do like trivia or whatever. Um, Zach and Ben, those guys are really fun um but you know just to do something like that where i have like a little trivia question or whatever to give away like a little bead that i made or i don't know i just i just i just like to do fun things and i don't know i'm gonna interview some people and do some talks and look at some cool knives and buy some stuff and i comment below what is your advice for me as a first timer going to blade show if you've been to texas What's what's to be expected? What's the do's, the don'ts? All the above. All right, let's get this back together. No captive pivot. All right, why does that not want to go in? Why am I struggling with that? It just does not seem to want to even go through there. Is that only, maybe, goes through this one. Yeah, it's kind of a one-sided deal. All right, so we are learning. It's going to go on this side. So I'm going to build off of this side instead of that side. Since you kind of want to use, or I find it's easier to use the bigger pin for the pivot. Oh, come on. Making it difficult on myself. Trying to make it easy on myself. And I'm just giving myself extra work at the same time. Sometimes, you know. Alright, so that needs to...
thinking about blade show now I'm not thinking about anything else and now I put that in back or I forgot to put that through there first okay why doesn't that want to slide through there that's just a weird tight fit makes it a little more difficult and of course I'm being flustered I'm so nervous I don't know what I'm doing no, uh, I just, you know, you try to keep talking and entertain while we're going here. And I'm kind of an idiot sometimes. And uh, we're going to get it to work. Okay, I usually like to put it back together with the blade out. Come on. So just slide that on there. Oh, of course you're missing this anyway. How many people are watching right now and screaming at me? I am all a mess right now. This is just not going well for me. This one seemed like such an easy back together. And I am struggle bussing it hard. All right. Oh, that's why. Because I'm an idiot. All right, for those of you who watched before, dropping stuff on the floor is really bad. And you heard that. I heard that. Where'd it go? I got the fridge blocked. But of course, oh, there it is. But just when they're small, you can't see. And I was wondering why, because I'm such an this backspacer, ugh. Okay. Wow. Kenman, this is literally the funniest rebuild. Oh, wow. I could back up three or four minutes right now of complete wasted effort that we can all watch and mock and... Oh, tear down. I apologize, everyone. I'm, I'm a genius. Okay. Such a cheap, simple knife, and I am... God, what an idiot. Don't get so hard on yourself. These are the things that you go through when you uh, do stuff like this. You have to be patient. You have to pay attention. You kind of think about putting it back together, and then you still forget something, which I did. Okay, so pocket clip's going to go on that side, so this side can go ahead and take some screws. When I put a knife back together, I do not tighten everything down all the way. You just kind of get, get it started because you have to pay attention to... Oh, sorry, I'm bumping the camera. You have to pay attention to blade centering. And if you tighten one side down too soon, and you can have issues with that. I mean, it's something you can fix. But why not, when you just set it up, just tighten everything slowly and correctly, and then you can have it be how it needs to be. All right, I'm a lefty. No! Well... The, I guess I forgot on this particular model, I do not have that option. So we got to take that screw out that won't come out. Why won't you come out? Oh, I know why. Making stuff difficult on myself here. And it won't come out because this side's attached. Or not attached to that stupid spinning. Oh my god. I just might have to edit all this crap out because it's just dumb. Oh boy. How come? We are, why does that not even, did you see that? 
Yeah, I know you saw that. That was... That was ridiculous. I apologize, y'all. That's okay. Those screws might be the same length, but I think the pocket clip ones are a little shorter. Maybe not. Worst rebuild ever. Don't be so hard on yourself, I guess. It's just another day in the world of knife customization. Look at this. Can't get the screw out. So y'all, we are here. We are almost done. This is the Citivian ST8901 something. Literally, this knife was $18. And we're doing all this fidgety work for this stinking $18 custom. Okay. Let's finalize this. So that's not a captive pivot. So I'll be able to get it most of the way. But then they're going to catch. And I'm going to have to put a, one on each side. Everyone these days should be able to captive pivot. Because then you don't have to monkey with what I'm doing right now. Two tools. Which is just silly because all you got to do is put a little D or a little bump or a little thing right there. And you have a captive pivot that you do not need to use two tools for. And it's not that hard to do at this point in stage in development. I don't really know how much more it would cost either if you just decided to just do it right away. And have it be part of the design. Oh, no, you hear that? That's the problem with T6s. Is if you're not pushing right you can get it to jump once and then you might be stripped and that screw shot oh man are you kidding me all right blade is centered mostly and it's a little tight as it always is generally you tighten it all the way down and then you crank it back just a little bit If you can even keep that in there, uh, captive pivots, everyone. All right. All right, we're there. Finally, holy moly, 27 minutes. That was seven, eight minutes just to put this stupid knife together. Kenman, I hope everyone enjoyed that painful thing that I just did. Here we are. Wipe it off. Sativian is done. Die number 26 complete. This had to drop shut action. It still does. I could maybe even tighten that back up just a little bit. Actually, it's solid. But I still think I could tighten it up just a little and that would bring it back to a little more centered. Yep, there we are. Done. Okay. 15 dies complete. Let's put them all out on the table. I know I still got that spacer. Oh my God. Let's just get these over here. Pa bow. Die number 15 done. Ba -ba Babushka, right? There we are. Try to make this under 30 minutes. Holy sh. Here we are. Okay. Yank this out. I am going to off camera this for a second because I have the dip over on the other table. I apologize. Get it off the hook. Give it a quick wipe off. Can you hear me rinsing? Probably not. All right. Back on camera. Boom. There's our spacer. Not bad, right? Okay, I'll try that off. That's it. We're good. There's a spacer. There's our knife. There's some dye on the table. We're good. All right, 30 seconds.
that's it for today. If you enjoy what you see, please hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. It helps me out. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Stay sharp.